Hey guys, my name's Cret, and today we're going to talk about protections, effective health, and sovereignty. Um, sovereignty is a very good item. It applies an aura and is also a tank item, so it has this utility feature that gives your team 20 physical and magical protection if they're within 70 feet of you, which is quite large. And it also gives you, whoever purchased it, that aura and a bunch of protections and health on top. So. To start, let's talk about just how powerful that Sov Aura is and try and get a figure on that. So here's our penetration line. This is for a standard crit build. If it's hitting a target with 53.6 protections or less, it will do true damage. As those protections increase, um, the protections that it will lower its targets to is higher. So when you're hitting a target with 100 protections, you're hitting them like they had 23, and that increases. 200, you'd hit them like they had about 74, 73. Here's that same line, but with sovereignty taken into account, right? So if that target has 33 protections and a Sov Aura, you're hitting them like they have no protections. But if they have 100 protections and a Sov Aura, you're hitting them like they have 33 protections, as opposed to hitting them like they had 23. This penetration line is going to go into our curves later on, and the first curves are damage taken curve. And what this does is it gives us the percent of damage that you take given your protections, right? So if you have no protections, you take 100% damage. If you have 100 protections, you take 50% damage. Now, because penetrations are or protections are affected by penetration, if you're at 100 protections, that's how you have how much you have to start. And then you're reduced to 76 by an executioner, and then taken lower by Warrior Tabi down to 50. You're going to take 66% damage as opposed to taking 50% damage because it's the end result that matters, not what your protections are in the first place, though they certainly help. Let's take a look at the same lines up against a Scylla, level 100, with no sovereignty. A level 100 Scylla. Well, you can actually see that over here. They've got 1,725 health and 61 physical protection. And we'll get to what this is a little bit later on. Now, at 54 base protections, you're going to hit them for 100% damage. As we mentioned, this uh, crit build uses true damage. We're using an old school crit build. No chin size involved, just to make things a little bit easier in terms of DPS, etc. Um... So it's Executioner minus uh, times 76, 0.76, or reducing it by 24%, minus 18, and then um, uh, times 66%, or reducing by 33, and then minus 15 for Warrior Tabi. So it's Executioner, Titan's Pain, and Warrior Tabi that we're taking into account. Let's take a look at the same Scylla uh, with the Sovereignty. And so, as you might expect, since 33 is increased to 53, which is the true damage threshold, a Scylla with 33 base protections is going to be the point where they start or stop taking true damage, depending on the perspective you're looking at. So if, if we mess with her skin a little bit, it's going to be about level 9 when you're standing next to a Sovereignty. So, oh no, level 10 when you're standing next to a player with Sovereignty, that you stop taking true damage from this crit build. Cool. So how much damage is actually dealt? Well, let's go up top, right? Now, Scylla has a base of 61 protections. Even without a Sovereignty, at level 20, that's how many protections he has, just from base value and scaling. So, a crit build with the Executioner, Titan's Bane, Warrior Tabi will never do more than 813 average DPS. Obviously, if they crit four times, it's going to do more damage, but this is just sort of a general figure to give you an idea what they would do in a perfect scenario over a long time. On the other hand, with a Sovereignty, they're never going to do more than 741 DPS. So what this is, is this is 61 base, no Sovereignty, 813. This is 61 base, plus the extra 20 from a Sovereignty, which you can see over here, and it's significantly less, right? 741, and it would be 741 over here, finding the same values. So there is a gap, and this gap is entirely comprised of sovereignty. You can actually see it here with these two numbers sticking out. At 100 protections without a sovereignty, you do 684 damage to your target. The crit build does. If they have 100 protections but a sovereignty on top of that, adding 20, they take 632 DPS. So it's not a huge difference. It's about 
what, 50 DPS? But hey, maybe that could save someone's life. Remember, hunters don't really do DPS. They hit multiple times, and you can average that into damage per second, but it's about hit, 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 hit. And in certain situations, when this extra 50 damage not happening on certain hits, um, that could keep you alive, right? If you die in five hits instead of four, well, you're buying yourself half a second or a little bit longer than that. So there are certain breakpoints and very specific situations in which the sovereignty can make a difference, but it just sort of depends on the situation, right? And it is going to make a difference in the damage you take over an extended period of time. But the thing is, when you're up against a hunter, you're only buying maybe a second, right? Because they just fire another auto attack and that will kill you. Up against a mage, it's very different. So let's take a look at Ra. Our Ra has built up to 600 magic power and he's using an Obsidian Shard and Shoes of the Magi. So with Obsidian Shard and Shoes of the Magi, you will do true damage on the target with 22.73 protections. So your Obsidian Shard reduces them to around 15 and then the 15 from your penetration boots reduces them to zero. So that's when you're doing true damage. That's when you're reducing their protections to zero. If they have a sovereignty, you don't do true damage unless they have 2.73 protections, which nobody has that low. So if you're a mage with Obsidian Shard and Shoes of the Magi, you will never do true damage up against a target that's standing near someone with sovereignty unless there's something else going on, like Guan Yu's Tablet of Assault to reduce their protections, right? And so these are our pen lines. They go into our damage taken curves here. This is regular damage taken. We've seen this before at uh, zero protections. You take 100% damage. Uh, here's if you have no sovereignty, right? At 22.7 protections, you take 100% damage. And if you have sovereignty at 2.73 protections, you take 100% damage. In this curve, obviously, the sovereignty will always reduce damage by more. Um, at 100 base protections, it is 66% damage reduction versus 61% damage reduction. Just from that little 20 extra. And you might not think that's a lot, but let's see what it actually equates into by zooming out. And up here, we've got a Searing Pain. Now, this Searing Pain is a raw with 600 magic power, Obsidian Shard, and Shoes the Magi. Its true damage is 1300. Ra's Searing Pain has 100% magic power scaling. 600 magic power makes that 1300, and it's 700 base. Um, up against a mage with 30 base magic protections, which is what Scylla has. She doesn't scale per level, right? No magic protection scaling. Um, you do 1240 damage. That's basically the highest amount you can do with Obsidian Shard, Shoes the Magi. 600 magic power and the base value from the Searing Pain. If they're standing next to a Sovereignty, well, you do 1,102 damage. That's a 140 damage difference, right? And so when we were talking about a crit hunter, it's like, well, you bought half a second, they just hit you again. When you're talking about a mage, right? Like if Ra hits you with Searing Pain and his Celestial Beam, so his combo, well, if you live, he doesn't have those abilities back up in a second. He has some auto attacks. Maybe that'll kill you, but if you're living by, like, 100 health, eh, that might not, right? So uh, protections can be very, very good against mages. And even with higher levels of magical protection, there's still a nice difference here. Uh, if you have 100 protections before the Sovereignty, the Searing Pain will do 861 damage. If you have 100 protections after the Sovereignty, it's only going to do 70... Uh, 792 damage so there's still about a 70 damage difference there cool so what are we really talking about when we're talking about protections and how does this how does this matter well it's really effective health right and so what effective health is is it's your physical protection multiplied by your health well not really your physical protection more like the actual damage reduction multiplied by your health to create a value of how much true damage, how much damage before reduction you have to take to die. Um, so if you're taking 50% damage, you have 1,000 health, well, you would need to take 2,000 true damage before you die. And effective health is essentially what allows you to live longer. Um, it is separate for physical and magical because protections are separate. Um, and you can actually calculate 
effective help with this fancy little calculator. So I'm going to have a link and when you open it up, it's going to look like this because a lot of these boxes are protected, right? Like it'll say, hey, you can't protect that just so this this page doesn't break. And there are extra pages that are not protected because like protecting a page takes a really long time, guys. Um, so these might break and I'll just make sure they're fixed uh, when they do. But yeah, so you can come in here, view protected ranges, and that'll turn it off so you don't have to see those annoying uh, boxes. You can change your god, right? So we want Scylla for now, and she's a level 20. She has Shoes the Magi, Bancroft's Talent Book with Occam's and So no, well, no, no health or anything. Let's give her a Warlock Sash, right? So Warlock Sash, 300 base health, and it has stacks here. So let's add those. It has 100 stacks on it, and this, uh, yeah, so 100 stacks, bam. This gives us 300 bonus health and increases our physical effective health by 374, or up to 3743. So we were at 3743. Oh, can't edit that box. Bam, we drop that to zero, and we'll switch that back to Bancroft's. There we go. 2,774. Uh, 77. So what was that? That was about like a thousand effective health, right? For physical protection at least. So this can just sort of give you an idea of how much those items can actually help you. Um, so, right, like if an item is giving you a thousand effective health and you're up against a build like the 100 build we mentioned earlier that's dealing like 900 true damage, well that item is giving you another second of life right so like this effective health is compared to the true dps you're going up against the dps before protections and that's how long you live let's talk about sovereignty so let's go over to athena this slot's empty this slot's empty this slot's empty well it's not going to stay empty actually let's go watcher's gift got midas boots bam and let's say we're level 12. And level 12 when you get Sovereignty sounds about right. So we're Athena. We currently have 3,000 physical effective health and 2,700 magical effective health. We're not under a soft aura. We don't have urchin stacks. We don't have warlock stash stacks or runic shield stacks or shifter shield stacks. And we don't have a soft aura that's not our own. Um, okay. Uh, and then there's also additional health, fizz prot, and magic prot, and this is just sort of like other effects, right? Like, if you're Guan Yu, your Talu Assault gives you protection, so you could put the 30 protections here, or maybe you gained health from something, and you can put it there. I don't think there are any health gaining features, but, you know, just in case you guys want to mess with that a little bit more and see how it all works out. So, we got Watcher's Gift, Midas Boots. Let's buy our Sovereignty. So we're looking at Physical Effective Health. It's at 3,009. And if we buy a Sov, it puts us at 5,600. So that's a gain of 2,600 Effective Health, right? Looking at Magical Effective Health, we were at um, 3,700 and it drops us to 2700 so it's giving us us a thousand magical effective health and 2700 physical effective health let's compare that to say a mystical mail mystical mail takes us from 3000 to 4800 so it's giving us a thousand less physical effective health it is giving us some magical effective health but about 500 as opposed to about a thousand um, it's also more expensive, but hey, we get that cool aura, right? So that's just sort of what are you giving up to get certain amounts of protection and defense and stuff. Uh, if we take a look at a wing blade, well, wing blade's super cheap, right? But it's not giving us that much effective health in comparison. Um, the magical effective health is just 3,200, and the physical effective health is 3,500 because it doesn't have those extra protections. So, Mystical Mail. Bam. Lower magical effective health, remember, because the Winged uh, wing Blade has 50 more health. And then, last item, let's say we go Witch Blade. So, there's no health at all, just protections. Well, the Witch Blade's going to give us 1,000 uh, physical effective health. 
So this cool little calculator can just sort of help you figure out where you're at. Um, just looking at those numbers really quick, by far, Sovereignty is the best item I've shown in that slot in terms of physical effective health, magical effective health, and gold efficiency. Obviously, if you're looking for something else, like the cool passive from Wingblade or the aggressive aura from Mystical Mail, that could be valuable. But what Sovereignty gives you and what Sovereignty gives your team, and we can just, let's take a look at that really quick, um, too. So back to Scylla. She doesn't have that. I have Bancroft's talent. I'm just filling it with random stuff. You can't even buy an Ansule. Let's be a little bit more realistic. Uh, it's physical protection. So Chronos Pendant and a Book of Thoth, right? So she has no boots. Really bad Scylla build, right? Um, 1600 physical effective health, 1500 magical effective health. She's only level 12. But if you give her a sovereignty, it's going to still pop her up quite a bit. Uh, you know, 200 to 200 magical, 300 physical, something like that, right? Um, yeah, I think that was like 200, 200, maybe less. Yeah, about 200, 200. So this, uh, this effective health calculator is pretty cool. It has all of the items in the game. In the future, it might be expanded to do more stuff. But right now, you just put in your god, which is over here. All right, you can type in all of them. You put in your level. What level are you? So, level 20. You can buy items. You can leave spots empty. So, uh, Book of Thoth, empty, Celestial Legion Helm, and then, I don't know how we got boots here, but we got boots in our fourth slot, right? And so that will give you a different value for uh, effective health as well. So check that out. Um, use it as you wish, and I hope it helps you out. Um, effective health is pretty cool. Oh, and, and let me just mention, like, Hide of the Urchin stacks, right? So if we get a Hide of the Urchin, uh, bam, right? Then there's a number of stacks here. Go to five. Cool, and then increases our physical protection. Um, if we're under the effects of a shifter shield passes, so you have a shifter shield, you're below 50 health, this adds it there. If you have a runic shield passive up, so you take an ability with a runic shield up for 5 seconds, you get some extra magical protection there. And then additional stuff is just like, oh, I'm Guan Yu and I'm using Talu Assault, how much does that increase my effective health temporarily? So, here you go guys, I hope you enjoy it. Um, Sovereignty is very efficient in terms of gold and effective health, right? But it's, uh, you know, it's not necessarily the all-the-time option, just if you really value what another item does. So I hope that helps you guys out, and I'll see you next time with another YouTube video, probably with a lot of numbers. Peace.